Since the early beginning, Odoo has been always targeting SMEs, and it will always be the case. However, um, I believe that it's uh, also important, even though we're not targeting fully on uh, the, the, the mid-market and corporate, to have a strategy for them. My name is Sebastian, and today I'm going to present um, the strategy we put in place for the mid-market and corporates. So let's start with facts and figures. Um, you all know that today, uh, a lot of companies are already using ERPs. But do you know how many in the mid-market and corporate are, have already implemented uh, an ERP solution? Any guess in percentage? No ID? Five? Actually, 84% of the companies in the mid-market have already implemented uh, an ERP solution. If you think about it, it's quite normal uh, when you know that as soon as you get to an, uh, another level in, in a company, it's more, comp more complex needs. Uh, they need to figure out how to manage the daily basis uh, activity. So it makes sense. But do you know how, how much it means for them in terms of cost? Basically, 25% of them said that they saw directly an improvement in terms of uh, re cost reduction when they did the implementation. That's something quite important. Now, the reason why a, a company implements an ERP solution is quite important as well. Of course, the first reason is the cost. Again, they want to reduce the cost. They all know that by implementing a solution, they will help the employees. They will help the management. They will have a clear picture on how the company is, is actually evolving. So that's the first thing. Second is to make the company easy to, to manage as well. Again, you all know that when we have a lot of employees, it's getting complex. You have more processes. So you need to have the right tools to manage your company. And when you, are, you have a growing company, it's the, same, it's the same topic. Again, you need to be able to where you're doing well and where you need to improve. Again, you need the, the right tool. If you have multiple location, it's getting even more complex. If you have an office in US, an office in Belgium, you need to make them work together. Having an ERP will help. And of course, uh, last but not least, the, the time to answer to a customer, to connect with them, to be able to answer whenever they have an issue. If you are in the service, they need to contact you ASAP. That's really important as well. So now, let's talk a bit about Odoo. In the last year, here we started in 2013, at least my graph, we've seen a huge growth in terms of leads for companies with more than 250 employees. That's really important. Um, we basically did by five the amount we used to do in 2013, even more. So that's why we, have, um, we were thinking, okay, hard to do to manage those customers because today the way we were managing them was exactly the same than the, the rest. The same the same salespeople, the same team behind. And we realized it was maybe not the best option. The other topic that pushed us also to have a, a strategy for them is that we realized the product now is mature. We have a product that can really handle any type of company. We have new applications such as consolidation, for instance. We have field services. We have a bunch of other things like e-learning that can really help. And with the maturity of the product, we believe that now Odoo is ready for any type of company. So the other topic is, of course, the revenue. With 1% of the contract, Odoo makes 15% of the revenue. It means something. And here we're talking, of course, of the revenue altogether, direct, indirect, doesn't matter. We see that those companies are representing that revenue today. So now, Odoo for middle size and corporates. What does it mean? Internally, what we have done is creating a, a specific team that will manage those leads. So the target is actually companies starting at 100 employees. Um, the goal is really to have a different type of approach. It means that um, we'll start from 100 employees or 10 million euros. Of course, we're flexible. We don't put a rule like that. It's more about having the, the agility to work with, uh, with those companies. It means that those companies need a high effort in terms of pre-sales. They need to see the product, they need an investment. They cannot just have a demonstration and that's it. They need to go through the features, they need to talk to um, any 
project manager, etc. That's really important. And of course, those companies are also companies with potential, potential to grow. They will start maybe with an, one application, they will grow step by step, but at least they need to have the size to grow. However, we'll, we'll stick to, to what we do best. It means that we're not going to take a company on board if they're really complex in terms of development. We need to have a close scope, uh, um, a, a scope as close as the standard as possible. And we'll keep the rule 80-20, uh, so 80%, 20%, uh, regarding the standard of uh, the solution. The goals, um, yesterday I did a presentation about the sales strategy for Odoo. And I had a question at the end where basically people were asking, okay, you know, when we're doing corporates, you cannot handle the, those customers like the others. You cannot have a standard approach and then grow with development, etc. This is exactly why we are actually launching this, this new team. It's all about leading by example. That's something that we've done uh, in the past years with the, the direct approach that we have launched. Um, our partners were saying it's impossible to, to manage uh, the, the way you, you say. And basically here, we want to prove that it works because it works. And we want also to provide the information needed to our partners. We want to show them the way and to provide the necessary, um, the necessary material to get there. It goes from the methodology that you just have seen to the reference that you need to sell also to your customers. We need also to improve the, the image. Sometimes we are still seen as only, a, uh, the Odoo is only a, a solution for, for SMEs. Of course, it's our target. But at the end of the day, we're able also to work with a, with a higher company. Improve the product, yes. We have seen that every time we take a big customer on board, we can always, we learn from them. We learn from them and it's a chance for us to actually improve the product, to see things differently. If I take an example, let's, uh, let's talk about the product configurator. That's exactly the kind of thing that we did because of a big customer, and I think it's, it's a great value. And at the end of the day, of course, be disruptive. We always, always want to be disruptive. That's in our DNA, and we will continue this way. So it means that even when we answer to an RFP, RFI, we do it the other way. And that's the most important part. The methodology, so as you know, I'm not gonna spend another hour on methodology. I think that uh, you, you had your time already. Uh, what I wanna share more is the way we're gonna sell to those customers, and the way we, we do actually. So I will at least go through the three first phases. The last are actually the one you, you just seen. So it all starts with prospection and qualification. As I said, we have leads coming to Odoo. We're dealing with those leads, we're doing a qualification, a proper qualification. But it can also be outbound. If, if we hear that a customer needs something, we can contact them and see how we can help them. We'll generate leads simply by the tools that we have today. And also, one really important thing, we'll decide if we go or no go. Today, already, when we have a lead, we decide if we want to take it straight ourselves, or if the customer is just willing to work with us, because that happens as well, or if we provide it straight to, to a partner. Then you have the pre-sales. The pre-sales are really important. We work with demonstration. That's, of course, the main thing. But first, we start with the qualification. We need to know the needs of the customer. As soon as we have the needs, then we go for the demonstration. And after, we go into the details of the RFP, RFI, etc. We qualify the budget as well. Really important to see if and where we stand with the customer. And then starts the pre-project. And that's really when we, we start talking about gap analysis, about the puck. All that is really important for us. Um, doing POCs is probably the thing that works the best. A lot of customers are coming to us. We do the gap analysis and say, okay, but yet we, we want to see what you can provide. What, what will be the, the, the real value that you will bring? And basically, by providing a POC, the customer is straight away convinced that, okay, the next step will be way easier as well. So here is basically what, what we have done till now. Um, it's something, of course, that is ongoing, but again, I think that the main message here is um, that we just want to replicate what we've done with the direct sales that uh, we have today, meaning that we, we sell directly to the small customer. Now we want to have the same with the big customer, but just to lead by example and to provide the right material afterwards to all the partners. So here, in terms of uh, prospection and qualification, 
it's all about time and material. That's really, again, really important. We never do any project in fixed price. It's time and material. We respect the rule of 80-20, and always with the agile methodology. The simplicity is the key, so we'll always challenge the customer as usual, but from the qualification. It's already starting from there. If in the sales process we're not doing so, it will never work. We need to be straight with our customers. Adapting the software is not the key. We'll always try to adapt the customer to the software, and that's something really important as well. And the focus will always be the budget and the timing. Catherine said that customer satisfaction is uh, not a good KPI. The reason being is always because it depends where you stand in the project. You see here a graph where in the pre-sales you see the evolution till the end. It, you have ups and downs and depending to who you talk, you will see a different variation. You will see that the CEO might be happy but the end user not. And that's something really important as well in whenever you, sold, you sell to those customers. The demonstration is probably the best part of Voodoo. We have a really flexible tool, really agile. And with that, every single time we go to a customer, we have the wow effect. People are amazed by the product we can provide and by the demonstration, the quality of the demonstration we can provide. And this is key in any process. And that's something that we're pushing and that we want to push even harder for any kind of companies. The pre-project, the gap analysis, is also really important. I think that you, you had the information just before as well. But the gap analysis is, of course, the key in terms of uh, knowledge of the product. And you need, you need that part to make sure that the rest of the pro project will go well. So as a conclusion, you understand the message here. Uh, the goal is actually not to focus on those customers, but really to have a strategy for them to have the right customer journey for them as well. We want them to feel that we can handle them really well and to provide the right information at any time. Thank you. I don't know if you have any questions. Go ahead. Of course. Yeah. We will always charge for the gap analysis, for the POC, for anything. Everything, every, every time we start, it means they will charge them, yeah. Yes? Probably. So the strategy that we, we put in place is always the same. We start as standard as possible, and when we need development, but good development, when we have done the, the, the challenge of the customer, when we're sure that everything that they need is really specific, then we can go into development, that's fine. But we don't want to start with um, uh, a bunch of development for nothing. We want to make sure that they will take the opportunity to adapt to the solution, not the other way around. Yes. Sorry, I didn't hear. How long takes a POC? It depends, from one customer to another. Um, normally what we do when we do a POC, we say we decide uh, which part of the project we'll, we'll do in the POC. So, but it, it, it's normally quite short. I would say that normally it takes a month or something like that. Any other question? Yes. Again, it depends. Um, normally, I would say that the gap analysis, uh, depending on the, co the, the, the company, can take up to f from five days to 15 days. So depending on that, yeah, it's based on man days. Today we have, uh, I'm talking here about Belgium, uh, but we can talk about the, the whole uh, world. Basically in Belgium, we have just double actually uh, the team because we launched the evangelist offer and for that we have around, I think by heart it's, uh, it's 80 people. We'll end up at least the, the year at 80 people. Um, so I'm talking here just about the, the functional part. The technical part is, uh, is a bit lower. Thank you.